folks and um, we're looking at this book it's a massive tomb of a book um, by McCulloch, Dr. McCulloch A History of Christianity and we're looking at uh, his thoughts on Irenaeus and he says at page 143 Irenaeus probably from Smyrna on the west coast of Asia Minor Irenaeus travelled first to Rome for study and then to southern France in the city of Lyons. Persecution devastated the church, Christian church there in 177. Among those killed was the bishop, Pothinus. So Irenaeus, Irenaeus took his place. His career as a writer was shaped by the practical concerns of a father in God for a flock troubled both by official harassment and by alternatives offered by Gnostic belief. He was not an innovative thinker. Um, I think the other thing that um, Dr. McCulloch says is that uh, Irenaeus is, um, was biased. Um, I think it's true to say that Irenaeus was definitely uh, a man for the times. Uh, the rise of the Gnostic movements, uh, Marcion, the Valencians and many others um, gave an eclectic mix of uh, theological divergence from uh, the apostolic tradition. Um, Irenaeus was a man trained in early apostolic teaching. He had trained under Polycarp as a young boy and Polycarp was a disciple of John. And so Irenaeus was absolutely steamed, uh, um, steeped in apostolic teaching uh, and the traditions. When Irenaeus is actually defending against these Gnostic sects, he actually uh, quotes the scriptures, the scriptures that we have today. Um, he, he, ought, he, he will quote uh, text after, after text of uh, the four Gospels. Um, and he was a man passionate about the church, as McCulloch got correct here. He was uh, a pastor of the church, and uh, that was his main focus of protecting the flock against the wolves. I would not agree, I do not agree with McCulloch in that Irenaeus was defining what heresy was. Heresy was already defined by the nature of what the truth was. The truth was the death and resurrection of Christ. This historical framework was the basis of Irenaeus's teaching. Um, I take issue with Dr. McCulloch here in, in saying that uh, recapitulation uh, the idea of reassuming uh, creation and human nature in Christ um, was a kind of part of the cultural context of the day. Um, he said such symmetries appeal to a culture fascinated by the poetry of numbers and geometry. Uh, that's a crass statement to imply that that's where Irenaeus is coming from. Irenaeus is coming from um, a, a historical meta narrative of the Bible that there was a fall and that there was a redemption. That is the heart of Irenaeus's thinking. It's that grand historical narrative that was his theology that he used to deconstruct uh, Gnosticism. The other issue I take with Dr. McCulloch here is when he says that. Um, Irenaeus was biased. Well, welcome to the club, um, Dr. McCulloch, you're biased. Everybody who writes history is biased. Josephus had his way. He uh, wanted to appeal to the elite classes of Rome. Um, every historian is biased. Um, so, does that mean to say we can't know about history? Does that mean to say that those who are biased that we can't learn from them? That they does that mean that they don't tell us historical facts? Of course they do. Um, and I think the other thing as well is in that biasness. I mean, a lot of feminist scholars and historians will critique Irenaeus and reject him and say that he's biased, but yet they show bias because when he's trying to stick up for women who are being vulnerable. And, and being seduced by these Gnostic teachers, the feminist scholars don't say anything about it, but Irenaeus did. 
why aren't the feminist scholars saying something about it? So in other words, there is bias all around. Um, those are my thoughts on uh, a history of Christianity.